We're probably never going to give you the five-day forecast on Living St. Louis, but tonight we are going to lead with sports. We have a story about the hardworking, driven, dedicated St. Louis University basketball coach, but not the one who's making most of the headlines. And Marie Berger's story tonight is about the other Billikens coach. Our inside game. Just before a game in January, the St. Louis University women's basketball team received a pep talk from their coach. Most importantly, above everything else, be committed to each other. All right? Be committed to each other. The Billikens had just returned from an 84 78 win on the road against Fordham. And on this night, we're working to beat Duquesne at home. The Billikens are led by coach Shimmy Gray Miller. Press offense two. And her Press team is a young two. one. The majority of her players are underclassmen, but age doesn't matter on this team. Coach Miller expects the same thing from each of them. Defense now, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. Pick it up. They're let's very, go. very best. Let's go, Bills. Pick it up. Not work hard. Nice uh, underachieve. Um, I have very, very little tolerance for that, and I think a, a lot of that stems from the way that I was raised. Um, my mom, you know, instilled that in me. You don't do things, you know, halfway. If you're going to do it, you do it, and you do it right, and you do it with everything you have. Okay, all right, listen to me. All right, you might think you're working hard right now, but you are not. So we have had a fairly decent practice up to this point. Do not lose it right now. Before coming to St. Louis U in 2005, Gray Miller was an assistant coach at the University of Arizona and the University of Washington. She grew up in Flint, Michigan. She was a star basketball player at the University of Michigan. And she doesn't just demand hard work from her players. She expects it from herself as well. No, 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 no. It's not easy. It's rewarding, though. And, and what, I'm, what I'm learning is that nothing in life uh, that's worth it is ever easy. When you were a student athlete, did you know this is how hard your coaches no, worked? No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm thinking they're just like everyone else, you know. I mean, and I, and I saw some of my coaches had families, had husbands and kids. And, and so, you, you, you know, they never complained about it and you never really knew. They never talked about it and, and you just... You, you don't, now I don't know how they were able to balance that. I mean, I have a dog and he hates me right now. Um, so I can't imagine what it'd be like if I had kids or a husband. Um, it's, a, it's a rewarding job. It, it, it doesn't feel like a job, although it's very, very stressful. Heather, Heather, rotate quicker, quicker. And why wouldn't it be? Let's face it, a coach is only as good as her next win. And that's pressure Gray Miller takes in stride. How's the team doing this year? This year, our record right now is 5-10. and 10. If you ask me, is that what I would have expected? Absolutely not. Um, I, am I disappointed, though? You know, I don't, I don't know if I'm disappointed in that. Obviously, you know, as a coach, it's my, ultimately it's my job to win. Um, but with that being said, there's a lot of, of things that, that, that people don't know right now um, uh, that go into that 5-10 and 10 record. Her starting players are all freshmen and sophomores. Eleven of their first 15 games were on the road. And for most of those, one of her best players was out with a broken hand. Now you see what I go through? Do you feel my pain? Are those excuses? No, those are just facts. It is what it is. You know, in our ten losses, we lost uh, eight games in either overtime or by six points or less. Is there a good loss? Is there such a thing? I think there is a good loss. There is a good loss. We, we played Wyoming at the time. They were ranked 24th in the nation. Um, defending women's uh, NIT champions. We lost to them by four points. Was that heartbreaking? Yes. Did it hurt? It hurt just as bad losing by four as it would have if it lost by 40. But on the other hand, it was a good loss in the sense that it kind of motivated my kids. Like, look, we're, we're, the, we're close. We're really, really close. And, and next year, and, you know, in two years down the road, um, you know, losses like that will actually help you. Um, they, will, they will help you. Get over the hump. You learn from mistakes. You 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 <laughs> have to. You have to. If you don't, then the loss was was for naught. 
you got to bring it in the second half, okay. all right? You got to bring it. No more jogging. Okay. First three steps are sprints, sprints, sprints. Box someone out and get some O-borns, okay. all right? Come on, okay. make something happen. You hear about student athletes all the time, their record-breaking performances, the coaches that lead them. High and soft, high and soft, high and soft, put it in, high and soft. But in most cases, those athletes aren't female athletes. Men's teams regularly get the attention, the hype, and the fan support, while women athletes compete in front of much smaller crowds with less fanfare. You've been in this business a long time now. Did it tick you off just a little bit? Um... And no, not anymore. It did when I was younger and I first got in this business and I couldn't, I didn't understand that. Um, it, it, that's how it's always going to be that way. And, um, you know, I accept that now. It's, it's almost laughable to me when I read in the newspaper and, and people are like, oh, you know, Coach Majerus, he, uh, you know, he doesn't sleep and he watches videotape all the time and his guys practice, you know, three hours a day and blah, 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 and oh, whoa, whoa. And, and I'm like, yeah been there done that do that every day you know his staff my staff puts in the exact same amount of time if not more than his staff my players work just as hard if not harder than his players do um you know but yet you go to one of our games and we've got 500 people in the stands and you go to one of his games and they've got you know 5,000 plus and and is it fair no but is it life yes Ray Miller says the number of people who aren't coming to their games will not reflect how hard her team works or impact what they do. And her hard work discipline doesn't stop on the court. These athletes must make the grades and take full advantage of the opportunity they've been given. When I first got here, I had a team meeting and I, and I asked the kids what their team GPA was. And it was like a 2.6 or something ridiculous like that, a 2.7. Okay, so you're not getting it done in the classroom. What was your record last year? They'd won four games. You're not getting it done on the court. What do you guys do in the community? Well, we did this. Well, what else? Well, that was it. How long did that take? Well, we, we, it took, you know, three hours. Three hour, hours out of your entire you know, year, you spent three hours out in the community. Well, yeah, so you're not getting it done in the court, you're not getting it done in the classroom, you're not getting it done in the community. Why the hell are you here? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. and, and so we're, we're going to change that. The, the court, is, that's what we knew would take the longest mm -hmm. to turn around. Um, but we could, we could change you know, the classroom, we could get those grades up within a year with a lot of study table, you know, a lot of extra tutoring, a lot of extra work, a lot of discipline and accountability. But the community, that was instant and immediate. Coach Require said each one of her student athletes performed 20 hours a year of community service work. We're uh, very blessed with an opportunity here to be uh, going to school and uh, playing a game, you know, playing basketball. And at the same time, it does kind of give us a platform where we are able to help kids in the community and um, help out at clinics, kind of teach some people some fundamentals of basketball. So it's definitely a good thing to give back, and that's something that our coach has uh, stressed from day one ever since we've been here. That's huge. We're out there. We're visible. It's great for the people we serve. It's great for my kids. Um, it's, an, it's important for them. But not only that, it also brings much needed visibility uh, to our program. Their game against Duquesne allowed no room for mistakes, but the Billikens' hard work paid off. They won 70 to 67. Are you happy here? Are you glad you came? I'm ecstatic. You know, I, this is where I want to be. Um, I, I, I've been blessed, Father Biondi and, and, the, and the board. They, uh, they honored me with a, a contract extension. Uh, it's going to keep me here till 2012. Oh, wow. um, I'm happy about that. Thank That's you. Um, this is like a second home to me. I feel very comfortable here. Uh, I love what my staff and I are doing. I, I love my players. And I think we can be really successful here in the, in the coming years. I really think that we can do something good and turn this program around and give it, make it a program that the city can be proud of.